Hello, this is Gary Byrne. I'm the Managing Editor of the Financials Hub for the SAP Experts. And I'm here at Financials 2013 with Nathan Janay. And he's the Managing Partner at Serial Consulting. And I'm just going to ask a few questions with, uh, with Nathan. Uh, first one, Nathan, and thank you for taking the time to uh, answer the questions today. First question is, could you cite some challenges that an organization that is starting to implement SAP Asset Retirement obliga Obligation Management is likely to face and explain and how they can overcome them? Well, the first thing, um, just like most other financial uh, endeavors, is it really, this is a more data-centric uh, application than some other ones are. So the more that you can get uh, your legacy data um, corralled together, uh, get it unified uh, and, and prepped with, it'll definitely speed things along a little quicker. Okay. And what advice would you offer to someone at an organization that is planning on integrating SAP Asset Retirement Obligation Management with other SAP applications? Well, uh, the big integration that it has is with the delivered fixed asset subledger. And we've had cases where if um, there's a lot of complex rules uh, driven by fixed assets, then those are requirements that ARO has to satisfy. Uh, but SAP has part of this. They've published documentation on how you can develop user fields and pass the data over. Um, but really, you have to kind of look at, at the, uh, from integration, you have to look backwards. You have to start with the fixed asset requirements and uh, figure out how you can adapt that to ARO. Okay. And can you uh, give me a few reasons why an SAP customer should consider implementing SAP Asset Retirement Obligation Management? Well, the, the reason that we're excited about it the most is because it's, it's a small module. You know, there's integration with, you know, uh, it's posting to the general ledger, it's uh, creating an ARO asset and the asset subledger. But on the whole, there's not a lot of complicated, intricate integration. It's uh, relatively quick to implement. I mean, outside of data conversion, it could be, um, you know, a two to three month project. Um, it doesn't, from what I understand, it doesn't really cost a lot of money. So, you know, as customers are always trying to build out their SAP footprint, you know, if there's other satellite requirements that they want to pull into SAP, uh, this is a small one and it doesn't, it doesn't take much time to implement um, and the complexity and integration requirements, they're just not that great. Okay. And what are some of the key issues that need to be worked out when you're implementing SAP Asset Retirement Obligation Management? The, what we refer to as uh, kind of the long pole in the tent is really around data conversion. Uh, that to get the solution up and running for requirements, do the blueprinting, um, and develop the solution and get it ready, could be, like I said, could be two to three months. But if you have, um, you know, 100 arrows to convert, versus a thousand, it's a really, really big difference. And that's where legacy conversion could be, honestly, it could be a couple of months. And that, that's unusual because that, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, legacy conversion was kind of a big part of SAP projects, but it seemed to have gotten a lot smaller. It gets offshore, there's a lot of accelerated solutions. So I think people tend to not give it as much respect as it should. And with this, um, there's just so much data you have to uh, convert for a single ARO, that, that's something you have to get lined up and ready to go from the day you start the project. Okay, thank you, Nathan. I think that's some good information, and, uh, and thank you for taking the time out today at, the, at Financials 2013.